Has Elon Musk gone insane with his new Grok AI? Or is this creation a demonstration of his complete and utter sanity? Remember how Musk once voiced deep concerns about AI safety and control? AI is far more dangerous than nukes. Well, I think we are seeing the most disruptive force in history here. AI will be able to do everything. This time frame is not relevant to AI. You can't take 10 years from the point at which it's dangerous. It's too late. And now he's transitioned from fear to innovation, launching his own AI system, namely Grok. And unlike ChatGPT with its conservative safety settings, he's designed Grok so you can actually put it into fun mode and drop the guardrails. So what's behind this shift from Musk's previous AI is the biggest threat to mankind to him flipping the switch on it and creating his own, but making it less safe? Has he truly gone insane? Does he just just not care anymore? Is it about money or power or is there something deeper at play? In this video we're going to discuss what happened at the Global Expert AI Safety Summit that caused Elon to change his mind and we're going to look at how Grok AI stacks up against ChatGPT in the AI Battle of the Titans. But first, let's briefly discuss what Grok AI actually is. So why did Musk choose the name Grok? Well, in the tech world, Grok means to understand. So his ambition for Grok isn't just about functionality. It's about intuitiveness. It's about feeling. Classic Elon always taking it to the next level. So Grok was created in just two short months. In contrast to ChatGPT, which has evolved all the way back since January 2018, essentially taking four years years and 10 months longer than it took to get where it is in comparison to Grok. Although Grok is still in beta, it's still largely shrouded in mystery and not yet fully public, but it's already turning heads with the things that it can do. It's going to be handed out to Twitter premium users first, and guess what? I'm a Twitter premium user, and the second I get my hands on it, I'll do another video diving even deeper into it. Okay, back to Grok. Elon actually founded a whole new company called XAI specifically for Grok. This isn't just another standard AI project. As Musk himself says, it's a rebel without a cause. Imagine an AI that's not confined by conventional limits. A witty, unconventional entity mirroring the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Because that's what we've been promised to get. So how does its beta version already stack up against ChatGPT? Who will emerge victorious in the AI showdown? Now, Grok's edge lies in its training. It's been fed on a diet of tweets. Ranging from the insane Karen tweets like this to the profound scientific and philosophical ones like this. We post 500 million tweets a day. And Twitter's been around since 2006. That's literally trillions of voices rambling their thoughts. So this gives Grok a unique understanding of human thought and culture. I mean, what better place to understand the pure insanity of the human race than Twitter where people post their thoughts live? I myself have been rambling on there for months, and I'm sure some of you have too. So ChatGPT, sure, yeah, while powerful, is anchored to data only as recent as September 2021. Unless you buy ChatGPT Turbo, which is a whole other video. And Grok, on the other hand, literally has its fingers on the pulse of live events and societal trends. So picture this, a politician gets caught doing something naughty, as they love to do. Boris. And then you could prompt Grok to access Twitter and get it to give you the general world sentiment of the situation and you could do that with anything politics music fitness memes anything that alone is truly an insane game changer so which is better then why has he promised that it'll dominate chat gpt well currently while the product's in beta the answer to this depends on your needs rock offers real-time information and promises to be more engaging and intuitive even potentially syncing with Neuralink's brain computer interface Face, which is absolutely insane and I can't even fathom right now. But as I said, it's in beta and it hasn't been tested out properly yet. It isn't as established as ChatGPT, which has a massive data set, but lacks real-time updates and can generate even biased responses. So to me, Grok's lack of guardrails, the ability to access the entirety of Twitter, and the fact that it's only taken them two months to get to this point, means it is incredibly likely that it will dominate ChatGPT. 
ChatGPT. What took ChatGPT five years, Grok has done in two months. Imagine where it'll be in even just another six months. Imagine where it'll be in another five years. I'm genuinely excited about it and will share my experiences with you the second that the actual model becomes publicly available. Now, Musk was once the harbinger of AI doom, urging the world to be careful, terrified, shouting from the rooftops for someone to step in and ensure it was safe. He actually once called it the greatest existential threat to mankind. And yet now he's built his own AI, seemingly adding to the problem and speeding it up. So again, what is this about? Is this about money? Is this about power? Or did something change his mind at that AI global safety summit? Well, what happened at the safety summit? So first, let's get this straight. That summit wasn't just some random meetup. It was like the Olympics of the AI world. It will go down in history as one of the most important events of all time. It's just as important as the nuclear proliferation treaty discussions, if not more. We're talking about Australia, Canada, Britain, Brazil, China, the entire European Union, the United States of America, you name it, and they were there. This summit that just happened between the 1st and 2nd of November was properly legit. And now here's where it gets interesting. Just two days later, on the 4th of November, Elon Musk dropped the bombshell about Grok AI. Coincidence? Definitely not. It's clear to me that something at that summit flipped a switch in Elon Musk's mind. I mean, sure, he had been working on Grok for two months before, but remember, he would have known about this summit well before the public. So it wouldn't surprise me if he started building it on the day that he found out that there was going to be one. And then after seeing what happened at the summit, he would decide whether to release it. Do you see the timing of all of this? It's no accident. So picture this, the world's biggest players in AI, all under one roof, seriously discussing the future of this technology. And there's Musk right in the thick of it with his genius brain absorbing it all. Now, after two days of time, talks, these countries sign a document known as the Bletchley Declaration. I'm telling you, this document is as significant as the Declaration of Independence. It wasn't just some bullshit piece of paper countries signed while thinking, yeah, sure, I'll do that. Don't worry. Lol. It was all about making AI safe, responsible, and human-centric. I guarantee it will be framed in a museum one day. It was a global commitment to keeping AI in check, ensuring it's a force for good. Our our countries were serious. I mean, they got the United States and China in the same room. That's hard enough as it is. And I have no doubt that Russia would have been there if it wasn't for this disgusting war. And when it ends, which I pray happens soon, they will likely be invited to the next one. You see, despite all their madness, world leaders don't actually want to destroy the world. They want to run it. If the world ends, who are they going to run? Themselves. And by the way, not all world leaders are like this, but but you can bet a lot of them are. So all of this showed Musk that AI could now be kept in check, that people were finally taking it seriously after he'd been talking about it for 10 years. So it seems to me, at least for now, he's content with the safety measures the world has put in place, and he can worry less about the existential threat to mankind. He can see the positives for embracing human life, for tackling big issues like health, education, and the myriad of other things that it'll do. Musk having witnessed this historic moment of unity and purpose must have realized that Grok AI had to be a part of this new wave of AI. An AI that's not just smart, but also safe, ethical, and above all, beneficial for humanity. That's why he waited. He needed to see the world come together to agree on a path forward for AI before he unveiled Grok. And he was clearly satisfied. It wasn't just about being on the right side of technology. It was about being on the right side of history. And that is how the AI Safety Summit didn't just change the game, it changed Elon Musk's mind. Okay, so it's all good knowing about these AIs, but how are they going to change the game for computer scientists, programmers, developers, and the general skills of the world? I mean, a professor named Dr. Matt Walsh has already predicted the doom of computer science, and I'm a computer science student. Well, I made a video on this exact topic that you should watch next. Thanks for watching. Peace.